So, welcome to this lecture on um, VHDL as part of the course digital system design with PLDs and FPGA. Uh, before going continuing with the, the lecture we will have a quick uh, run through the last uh, lectures portions. The last lecture we have completed the, uh, the data types uh, basically the composite um, and uh, the integer real um, scalar type. And then we looked at the concurrent statement um, with select uh, statement. So, a quick uh, run through the slides. So, let us go to the to the slide. Um, so, we talked about the data type integer. So, what is predefined in the standard library and how to use it and the real type which is probably less used and a physical type you know the, the time with the unit as femtosecond you can check what is the latest uh, the VHDL standard um, kind of basic unit uh, must be femtosecond only. So, uh, that is um, the various units specified and we have it is possible to define subtype on a type. The advantage of defining subtype is that you can use all the operators unlike you if you define your own um, data type then you need to overload um, all the operators uh, functions which you need to use uh, for this particular data type. And this shows various user defined um, data type enumerated these are integer these are this is uh, real and this one is a physical data type and this is a subtype. And we have looked at the unconstrained array and we said that standard logic array is uh, defined as unconstrained that is why you constrain it when we use it and you can have multi dimensional array any, any number of dimensions and we have seen an example of that and you can have record whereby you can kind of um, you know related um, signals or variables can be put together and this shows some uh, input output enable of tri state gates are put together and you can assign like in as a record in uh, structure in C uh, the similar syntax is used and you can see that uh, the component individual component within is accessed with the dot. And um, if you have some signal a part of it can be aliased um, like we have used the top address line of an 32 bit address is aliased with the top AD. We have also seen various ways of assigning the rows. Uh, this is a positional you know kind of association, this is named association, this is uh, like a string and this one is again positional association with this others um, hexadecimal based uh, specification. And if you say others means that everything is everything is uh, you know one value that in this case it is 0, uh, the other case it is uh, tri state. So, uh, this is very useful one because if you have say a 32 bit bus which you want to kind of uh, output you know something is connected to 32 bit bus and you want to initialize it or you want to tri state it you do not have to write you know keep on writing z then counting it 32 times and all that you just say others z. Uh, that is the most uh, useful form of array assignment. And then we have looked at the, the important part concurrent statement. As the name suggests this is used in the concurrent body that is in the architecture statement region. This cannot be used within a function or a procedure or a process. It has to be straight away used in the concurrent body or um, the architecture statement region. So, the syntax of which select when is with some you specify some input you say select for all mutually exclusive values of that signal you specify the output the numerical values or as, as a function of some other inputs ok. So, we said that this is nothing but the truth table in the, in the simplest case we have seen an AND gate uh, say A1 and A0 and for all the 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 the value the output is specified it is a simple truth table the equation is wherever there is one 
So, that mindem is a, the equation or if you have multiple ones then you say or uh, if you have two ones then you say or and that choice. So, you wherever one is there you pick up that mindem or the next one and so on and this we write when others uh, to, to for the simulator to uh, completely specify all input combination because standard logic can 2 bit standard logic can take 9 into 9 81 values and we are only specifying 4 of them. So, RUS 77 is you know covered here. So, you could even say 1 when others but uh, as I said you know specifying some known values will help you in debugging like you know that if some of those uh, kind of uh, combination occurs then the 0 can ha happen even you can say tri state does not matter because it is useful for debugging you know. Um, and next we have seen the case where uh, the output is specified for all the values of a input signal A as a function of B and C ok. And that is a little more complex uh, truth table. So, you see uh, when A is 0 0 then Y is B. So, Y is 0 when B is 0, Y is 1 when B is 1 and so on and the C is do not care. So, this expands into multiple rows of the each one is expanding into kind of uh, 2 rows of the truth table. But when the equation is written um, it is it is kind of A1 bar and A0 bar and B or like. So, this is straight away this choice is A1 bar A0 bar and B is Y or uh, A1 bar A0 uh, and B bar and so each one is a is a min term or a product term or this or and so on it goes uh, the equations. So, that is what is shown here and we have seen that um, the, the, the same thing and one thing to remember is that whenever there is an event on A, B or C the simulator computes this and um, as far as the synthesis tool is concerned it will look at the uh, you know look at the description and form the equation um, that is uh, simple as it is. And um, this can be used for you know example is shown with a multiplexer. So, natural choice for the select signal is this the select signal of multiplexer. So, for various combinations 0 0 0 1 1 0 y is, y is A B C D like 0 1 2 3. And uh, the equation is like this you know the select 1 bar and select 0 bar and A or and so on ok. So, each one is a min term or this one, this one, this one and I am showing only y i. So, because uh, for a bus uh, you know whether it is 4 bit or 8 bit the equations are uh, same you know exactly similar for each bit of it because it, it goes through the same type of and or uh, structure. And um, and it is easy to confuse this uh, kind of syntax with the multiplexers function, but um, we have seen that any combination circuit um, without priority can be easily specified by with select. So, if you have multiple inputs one output then you pick up some input and for all the mutually exclusive values of B you specify Y as uh, some of A and C uh, depending on your logic and that is what is uh, which selects provide you. And uh, this is uh, there is no priority actually this is for all it is a plain truth table with little abstraction maybe it will translate in you are bringing A and C. So, some more uh, columns are added some more rows uh, come into picture. So, it is still a, a kind of straightforward truth table. And as I said if you have uh, the, the output uh, has the same function or same values for different choices of the values then you can use or and that is what this example say. So, uh, that is uh, what is the which select um, um, concurrent statement. So, let us look at the, the next one which is when else which is a uh, little more complex than the with select. So, please have a look at this uh, syntax. So, which says that 
you have some output signal it could be a single bit or multiple bit it does not matter. Uh, you have an output signal which is assigned some expression and this can be a numerical value like 0, 0, 0, 001 depending on the, the width or it can be some input condition input expression you can say a and b uh, or a a bar or whatever okay. When condition 1 that means condition is again an input you know you can say uh, c is equal to 3 or p greater than q and so on. So some condition based on the input then you say else which was not there in the width select okay. Else some other expression when some other condition okay um, else and so on okay. And at the end we say an else which is that means everything else is, is expression y okay. So this naturally brings in the priority okay that means we are saying output is some expression when some condition suppose we are saying a condition a equal to b and we say suppose uh, this is 2 bits and we say 0 0 when a equal to b. Then we say else it means that A is not equal to B okay and we say another condition say D greater than B. So it means that the output is maybe this was 0 0 this is 0 1 output is 0 1 when A is not equal to B and D is greater than 3 okay. When you say else it means that it is not this condition and not this condition that means you say. Uh, a is not equal to b and d is less than or equal to 3 then maybe the output is expression 3 and some other condition okay. So as you go down uh, the not of all the previous condition is, is, is coming into picture okay. So it is it brings in priority first, first thing to note that is that there is a priority. So it is a little more powerful because um, you see this condition 1 can be uh, in terms of 2 signals and when it comes to condition 2 it can be another signal another group of signals and this expression itself can be some inputs. So it is quite a powerful quite an abstract um, statement uh, much more powerful than with select and brings in priority and most importantly the question is that is it um, are we completely specifying a truth table by this um, kind of um, structure or um, syntax that is a question. Uh, you think um, about it whether it is it is a truth table the answer is yes it is it is a truth table but it is it is in a much more abstract and I will show you soon very quickly I will show you. Uh, this is nothing but uh, a truth table a complete truth table is specified in terms of all the inputs involved um, that we will see in a moment. So let us look at how the equations are derived for the combination circuit uh, from this syntax. So again I am not putting down uh, some signal it is still little abstract. So you have an output signal and expression A when condition 1 else expression D b when condition 2 else expression c when condition 3 and so on okay. So the equation comes like this output signal is expression a and condition 1 when I say and condition 1 is equal to working out the, the product terms all the product terms of the condition 1. So it can expand into multiple product terms okay. So it may be like you say d greater than uh, c there could be some um, you know product terms in terms of d and c uh, or and so on okay. So there could be multiple product terms. So it is still abstract but then the, the meaning is that the equation is expression a and condition 1 or and when you come here it is a not of condition 1. So expression b and not of condition 1 and of condition 2 okay or when you come here it is expression C and not of condition 1 and not of condition 1 condition 2 and 
condition 3. So, it, it brings you know it, it expands like that and if you remember your basic uh, course you would have seen a priority encoder um, you will see there is an AND gate uh, as it goes down to lower priority from the higher priority there is an AND gate with lot of bubbles you know becoming bigger and bigger. So, that is similar thing is happening there, uh, but there it is you know um, uh, the single kind of normal normally is a single bits which is going to the AND gate not of the previous uh, previous inputs and so on. So, that is the same thing, so it is quite powerful. So, let us see an example uh, and um, I want to illustrate how it is specifying the complete truth table. So, let us take an example y uh, is a single bit signal a b c are single bit like y is output single bit a b c are inputs which are also single bit, but these are inputs p q r are inputs and they are all 2 bits you know. So, you have p 1 p 0 q 1 q 0 r 1 r 0 and so on ok. So, you can imagine a truth table with p 1 p 0 q 1 q 0 r 1 r 0 and a b c and y ok. So, imagine wherever the, the values of p is greater than q irrespective of the conditions of r a b c. So, b and c y gets a and when it comes other rows like p is less than or equal to q. So, wherever the rows in the truth table where p is less than or equal to q all conditions all rows and r is equal to q we write y is b ok. Else for all other rows we write c. So, it completely captures uh, the truth table, but it is very powerful I will show you the truth table. So, we I have put it um, I have kind of uh, compressed a, a b c ideally I should have put um, in the input section this is the input section this is the output I should have put a b c also, but to save space I have included a b c in the output expression, but it is easy to understand ok. So, um, in reality the truth table is much bigger than this. So, you, you look at this scenario where uh, the p 1 p 0 q 1 q 0 r 1 r 0 are the inputs y is the output. So, look at this scenario where uh, p 1 p 0 is 0 1 q is 0 0 r is 1 k r. So, here p is greater than q. So, the output is y is a as I said you should have an a column then if a is 0 y is 0 a is 1 y is 1. So, it is simple you can derive that and when it comes to this case you see uh, p is 0 1 and q is 1 0. So, the p is less than q then r you look at the value of r 1 0 this is 2 then as specified the y is b, but in other cases where p is less than q and r is um, kind of not equal to 2 the y is c and you can you know you can populate these values all the way from 0 0 0 0 0 1 all the way you know that all the way it comes to 1 1 and 1 1 you see is p is not greater than q r is not equal to 2. So, this is c. So, this is a at least this truth table has a uh, 6 column. So, it is kind of uh, 64 rows, but if you bring in a b c then it is uh, 7 uh, sorry uh, 6 plus 3 9 uh, uh, kind of column. So, you will have 5 total rows for this truth table. But you see the power of this statement all that 5 total rows are compressed into 3 statement and many a times this is how we think you know we do not think um, like though we when you have a spec of a combination circuit you write the truth table, but we always think in terms of abstract like this you know you have some inputs then the problem statement itself could be like this you know you have p is greater than q then the output is this otherwise if some other input is equal to something then the output is this if none of this is then the output is something else and so on. So, that also shows that the language allows you to think uh, real life, but you should not lose sight you should not think that this is some magic 
ultimately this we are specifying the truth table and um, a word when a simulator as far as simulator is concerned if there is any event on P, Q, R, A, B or C this Y will be computed or uh, this you can imagine like a process with this A, B, C, P, Q, R in the sensitivity list any event happens on any of these input Y will be computed and Y is if there is another statement which is concurrent then that also will be computed. But as far as synthesis tool is concerned say it is going to look at say P greater than Q and there is an operator greater. So, it goes to library pick up the greater operator and that would have been written as an already as a synthesizable code uh, which shows the structure of greater than Q uh, like some input greater than some, some other input. So, that will be replaced uh, the synthesis tool will plug in that circuit here and if you if you think this could be a kind of you know when uh, a kind of multiplexer when this condition happens this output is let this input is left led to the output. If not and this condition happens, this this input is led to the output. So, this will be some kind of um, kind of various uh, operators implementation of operators some kind of priority and some kind of muxing happens ultimately as far as synthesis tool is concerned. So, we will see we will see how the synthesis tool does this as we go along uh, I am giving you a kind of taste of uh, how things happen now only at the beginning. So, um, th this just I have written the disc description in this code wherever there is P greater than Q where there uh, the Y is A uh, when it comes here whenever there is P is less than or equal to Q and R is 2 that is B and for all other condition C and any event happens on any of these input the simulator computes synthesis tool looks at the, the operator and infer um, the operator and replace it with the template uh, structure from the library that is what is happening. So, let us take an example uh, which is a priority encoder. So, you can imagine a I have not drawn the picture, but then you can imagine there is a block where there are 3 inputs A, B, C single bit input which is encoded into 2 bit because we have 3 bits and so um, where the maximum priority is given to A next priority is B next priority is C and none of that happens uh, the output shows 1 1. So, uh, the coding is that the, the prior which is output is 0 0 when A is equal to 1 else that means A is not 1 A is 0 then and B is 1 then the output is 0 1 and when it comes here A is 0 B is 0 and C is 1 then the output is 1 0 and when it comes here none of this is uh, 1 or A is 0 B is 0 C 0 then the priority uh, output is 1 1. So, this shows a natural very simple example of um, using the when else uh, maybe we will see um, a little more kind of uh, um, little more complex example uh, with the when else. So, let us look at this uh, example this bring in uh, kind of one or two uh, elements we have studied together the array assignment the uh, in out mode and when else everything is put together. So, that you get a taste of uh, some odd real life coding. Uh, so, this please look at this uh, structure uh, it is a bi directional uh, buffer or a transceiver. So, please look at it. So, a bi directional buffer gives you know the connects um, two lines in either direction. So, you see here when the direction is 1 and enable is 1 A is driving the B. So, you can imagine this as a some output section driving a bus or something like that. Uh, this is where everybody is tied together similar structures. So, when direction is 1 enable is 1 uh, this is enable and since direction is inverted here. So, this is disabled this is cut off 
this output is cut off though the input is coming here. So uh, naturally A goes to B and when opposite is the case when direction is 0 this is cut off because this is get 0 and the enable is 1 uh, then this is enable. So this part is cut off and B assume that B somebody is driving some output is driving this and B goes to A. So mind you this is bidirectional you can drive it and somebody else from outside also can drive it. So uh, this has to be the, the, the mode of this B is in out mode of A is in out because in principle when this is cut off uh, somebody can drive it and so on. So uh, this is the library description uh, uh, you know of the, the VHDL. This is a standard logic 1164 and this is entity transceiver trans is port. We have 2 signal and which are 8 bit okay I am showing 8 bit because the control signals are common for all the tri-state gate. So AB is in out because of this structure standard logic vector 7 down to 0 enable direction is in standard logic and transceiver and we define the architecture as some name of this entity is begin and end this, this architecture names ends this part and this is where we write the concurrent statement. Now you see we are going to write this path first and this path because in the concurrent statement mind you you need to have a statement for one output and another statement one output. So we are going to write B output first and then A output uh, second. So that is what we are doing B is an output B gets A when direction is 1 and enable is 1 else it is tri stated. So we say and this is a being a bus we say others you know the assigned Z that is it okay. So which, say, which says that uh, B is gets A when both are 1 else it is tri stated. Similarly if we define the output A so A gets B when direction is 0 and enable is 1 else it is tri stated you know this is tri stated else others is said end the flow. So this shows how to use the when else in a more practical more um, real life uh, case. Um, we have seen how the in out is used we have seen this array assignment um, the others uh, close here. So that shows a, an example of using when else another example of using when else. So let us look at the uh, so we have completed uh, the concurrent statement. Uh, the concurrent statement is essentially two types uh, with select and when else we have some loops we will see that uh, you know together for both the concurrent and uh, the sequential together and the main concurrent statement are with select and when else with select is, is no priority output is um, normally specified as for all the values of some input. Uh, the output can be specified as a simple truth table of numerical values or if you have other inputs you can write as a function of uh, those inputs. In that case it translates into multiple rows of truth table and we have seen some example of uh, uh, which select uh, coding. The next little more abstract one is when else which is little more powerful we can specify priority we can specify condition in terms of multiple input the expression can be some other input. So it can capture much more real life scenarios uh, from the, the, the specification given for a combination circuit and we have seen how some symbol 3 uh, kind of choices can translate into a huge truth table. So that is a power of uh, when else and we have seen the coding for a priority encoder and we have seen the VHDL coding for a simple uh, bidirectional buffer or a transceiver with two controls enable and direct. Uh, so let us now move on to the sequential statement which are uh, more useful more complex uh, than the concurrent statement like which select and when else. 
So, let us move on to the, the sequential statement. Uh, there are two types, um, this is identical to uh, what you have learned in a C language or sequential languages. Uh, so, you have if then else and case when, only thing is that it is now uh, kind of related to the hardware, we are describing the hardware. So, all the uh, the equations are different you know they it is not um, you should you should know what is the hardware behind it. When you use this statement you should know what hardware it means ok. It is not mere uh, kind of some variables you are working in a in a sequential language ok. That should be kept in mind and I will tell you uh, what is the kind of equations Boolean equations or the hardware you get when you use this syntax. So, uh, the simplest syntax is like this if some condition, condition 1 then uh, some output gets some uh, expression of the input ok or numerical value it does not matter. So, if condition 1 condition in terms of the inputs then y gets a else. So, the priority is there uh, else means if not of this condition then y gets b ok. So, end if so a and b are input signal the whatever signals in the conditions are inputs. So, the, the equation is y is a and condition 1 or the moment you say else or b and not condition 1. So, which is um, exactly similar to uh, the when else ok. So, uh, this one is uh, exactly similar to when else, but mind you the sequential statement can be used only in the sequential bodies like process uh, functions and procedure. You cannot write E for case directly in the architecture uh, statement region of the, the VHDL code that is not uh, that that is not possible. So, you should always use sequential statement in process functions and procedure. So, let us uh, look at more complex um, kind of syntax. So, basically uh, the conditions like in when else it is general conditions you can say uh, p greater than q c equal to 3 and things like that and there is priority. So, the, the next kind of complex syntax is if condition 1 then y gets a instead of else you can say else if it is not e l s e i f it is e l s i f else if condition 2 then y get b else if condition 3 then y get c at the end you say else which comprises of all not of all the conditions. So, you need to have when you specify the proper combinator circuit you should have the last else. I will tell you what happens if not there. So, uh, it is very important which comprises of everything else then only the truth table is complete ok. Uh, because we are putting the condition which means some rows of the truth table when you say last tells all other rows in the truth table that is what it means. And you can see that uh, uh, the equation goes like this y gets a and condition 1 or b and not of condition 1 and condition 2 or c and condition 3 not of condition 2 not of condition 1. So, exactly like when else it, it builds up you know as it go down when you come to the last one which is d and not of condition 3 not of condition 2 and not of condition 1. So, it, it, it is like a priority encoder it builds up and, and this itself can be very complex. Uh, we are you know kind of abstract condition 1, condition 1 can be translated to multiple rows of the truth table, A lot of min terms or product terms it can come depending on the condition you put. So, that is if then else uh, statement ok. Now, I said it is equivalent to when else, but so the question is uh, if it is just equivalent to when else what is the big deal you know why, why you have to write a process and put this inside the process. So, can you uh, kind of think of a reason how if then is different from when else. So, so you look at the when else, the, the when else uh, statement was earlier say here this is the when else. 
uh, an output is specified as a as some condition exactly like um, if then so what could be the difference between when else and if then think for a while so um, you can think of the c language that might gives a uh, give you a clue so uh, basically uh, if you look at it what it allows is that when you say condition 1 you could write another input you know you could write z get something z get something z get something. So in an if then else structure you can specify multiple outputs okay that is one uh, difference between when else and if then and that is very useful very powerful and so that is one you can specify multiple output and another uh, thing again if you compare uh, with the, the kind of sequential language like C you can write in principle say here if condition 1 then I can nest it I can say another if you can say if condition say 5 uh, under this condition then y gets a else why get something else and you say end if okay. So you can nest if okay uh, everywhere you know the, you can have a if here, if here, if here and so on okay. And it is not that you can go on you know nesting it many synthesis tools limit the level of nesting because uh, the equation can become messy and you are bound to make mistakes and so on. So uh, if then is else is equivalent to the when else but it support multiple output it support nesting you know that is very powerful uh, you can bring in lot of complexity in description by these two the multiple outputs and nesting. So uh, this is what I am going to show so you have say y and z output and 3 inputs a b c all are let us say multi bit and now you can write say if condition 1 then y gets a z gets a and b else if condition 2 y gets b z gets c else if condition 3 then y gets c z gets a else y gets d z gets b and so on. So this, this shows you that um, you can specify multiple output using uh, con, uh, this same if and the equations are similar you know how to work out the equation there is no uh, uh, you know great um, um, you know complexity as far as the equation is concerned. Uh, you have the same inputs in condition as column a b c as columns then you have a y output z output you can write the work out the equation say y is a and condition 1 um, and b and not of condition 1 and of condition 2 when it comes to z z is a and b and condition 1 and uh, or c and not condition 1 and condition 2 and so on okay. So that can be worked out. but uh, if you are clever uh, you should be asking a question say all fine you know it is great but this assumes one thing that uh, the condition for these outputs are all same okay. Maybe that you cannot uh, the, the, the relation between the input and the output are, uh, are such a way that you have no way to specify like this you know is that is a and b not on this particular condition little more restrictive under this condition some more conditions are uh, required for a and b then you are in soup you know you cannot use this kind of structure but that is where the nesting helps you. You, you could write say if condition 1 y gets a then you can write if some other condition is met then z gets a and b else something else. So you could further nest. Uh, if uh, to specify very specific conditions you require for multiple outputs. So that is where the nesting is, is important so you can have a more complex behavior or uh, structures can be specified by nesting. Suppose uh, we will not be like in the case of multiple output we will not have the same conditions uh, you know satisfying all the output. So uh, you could have like this you know if condition 1 then uh, maybe z is written here something then you say if condition 2 then y gets a else if y gets b uh, end if 
then else if uh, you know condition 3 or 4 then so on. So, you could nest if and the equation as far as y is concerned it comes like this a, y is a and condition 1 and condition 2 because it is under this condition 1 we are putting or then you say uh, you know b and uh, not of condition 2 and condition 1. And when, when it comes to this else if condition 3 uh, for say z or something like that uh, then uh, this condition 2 does not appear there and so you can work out. So, this is where the nesting is useful and uh, let us come to another point ok. So what happens if you miss else uh, in a if case like you write if condition 1 then y gets a and we do not write else we just say end if and mind you this is a uh, kind of valid VHDL syntax VHDL support this the simulation simulator support this synthesis tool support this. So, what is the meaning of this? So, uh, you can attribute different meanings to it you can say uh, if condition 1 is not met y can be 0 y can be 1. Um, but these are less probable uh, from the description, but what is the VHDL attributes uh, or VHDL take this for is uh, shown here ok. Uh, it is just by definition do not uh, do not kind of argue on why this should be like that, but this could be the, the probable meaning and the VHDL take this in this way like it means if you write if you miss else it means that if this condition is met then y gets a else y is y itself ok and that is funny that is dangerous ok in the sense that uh, it shows a feedback ok. If this condition is met some y gets an input if this condition is not met the output is fed back into the input that is the meaning of it and I am showing uh, and so there is a memory it memorizes if for this condition it is normal input goes to output if this condition is not met it memorizes the previous one. So, it is called implied memory because this code implies a memory or inferred latch or you can say this code infer a latch from the return code. So, the, that is why it is called implied memory or inferred latch. So, the situation is like this if y and a are single bits and there is a condition may be p greater than q or whatever. So, that is the decode of this uh, p greater than q when that is 1 a goes to the y and if y is uh, if that condition is not met then this path is enabled and the y is fed back and it is latched ok. And this is nothing but a 2 to 1 mux. So, this you can replace by a 2 to 1 mux with the select line and the select line is the condition 1. When the select line is 1 a goes to b otherwise the b is fed back. So, this you can replace with the 2 to 1 mux and with an inverter you get a latch you know that is a, a normal latch uh, kind of RTL uh, symbol. Uh, so, that is what you get ok. So, this is very valid and when you if you need a latch like this you can write a code like that. Uh, but the question is that can we have uh, a latch in the concurrent statement ok. Concurrent statement like with select and when else the answer is yes because we at least in the case of when else because it is equal unto if then you can imagine you say when you say output is. Uh, something when some condition is met and you say instead of saying else you keep quiet you do not state that then you get a implied memory or inferred latch in a concurrent statement. So, or in the with select case you specify a condition uh, a decode and you do not specify anything else you know then you get a latch. So, let us look at the, the syntax. So, with suppose you you take with 
it say this is the enable of the latch with enable select y gets a when 1 and we are not saying uh, something for when 0 or when others okay you say just say y is a when 1 and we do not say what happens when others that means y gets y when others okay that is the meaning of it uh, or you can even say like this with enable select y gets a when 1 unaffected when others that means the output is unaffected when for the other cases both are same. Uh, similarly for when else y gets a when enable 1 we do not say else then you get uh, the same thing or you say y gets a when enable is 1 else unaffected okay. So uh, for concurrent there is a you know syntax called unaffected so it means that the it retains the same output that is the meaning of it. Even for sequential statement there is a thing called null which will give you the same effect that means that uh, here you can say instead of this you can say if condition 1 then y gets a else y gets null means y will you know uh, remember the previous output that is the, the previous value that is the meaning of it. So you could specify in principle null so that is the uh, that is how you uh, you write inferred latch or implied memory using the concurrent uh, statements okay and unaffected and null can be used and now now mind you uh, wherever you do not uh, assign some output you do not write unaffected and null you will get a latch okay. So be very careful null does not mean uh, you know initializing it to 0 or something like that so do not write null wherever. Uh, you feel that something should be initialized to 0 null will give you a latch and do not uh, write it unless you require it okay. So let us see the use of this and you are not normally we use flip flops for as memory in the serious design you do not use a combinational kind of latch in, in, in real life. So uh, we do not use it okay so what is the use of this kind of implied latch. So the first thing is that the implied latch or implied memory or inferred latch is useful in specifying the behavior of latches and flip flops or registers. So we are discussing uh, the combination circuit now. So we are discussing how the combination circuit can be uh, described using uh, the concurrent statement and sequential statement. We have not yet gone to the sequential statement we are still discussing the, uh, the combination circuit. But when we go there we will see how this um, description helps in specifying the memory for memory part of the latches and flip flops. Uh, but uh, in real life when you write combination circuit unintentional implied latches can happen okay. So that does not mean that you will write code like this. But when you have complex code when you have a lot of multiple say one scenario is that uh, we take this example and uh, where multiple outputs are specified say here suppose you have y, z and uh, maybe u is specified everywhere and you cut and paste you copy paste you know that is the usual uh, the, the scenario nowadays a lot of copy paste happens. And suppose by mistake you forgot to mention z here okay you copy pasted and you forgot to mention z here that means uh, it, it essentially means z is z as far as condition 3 is concerned. So when it comes to this choice that means condition 3 not of condition 2 and not of condition 1 z will be fed back to itself and you get a latch and all the more not only in multiple output when you have multiple nesting very complex nesting which is unbalanced like you have an if and under that uh, in various choices of if some has another if some does not have if and there are multiple output it can be very complex and you can you can really miss some output um, to specify because it is little difficult to work out. Uh, all the outputs properly in such cases um, you can miss some output and you will get an implied latch and it is extremely dangerous. I tell you 
and this is one of the uh, as far as I am concerned what I have seen is this is very common error and inexperienced designer commit in VHDL coding that is this implied latch when not in simple case because in simple case it is very evident when you have multiple outputs and when you have nesting very kind of um, uh, complex nesting in, in the sense that is unbalanced then you will get you are bound to make mistake some output is not going to be specified properly for some condition and you will get a latch and mind you it is very difficult to um, debug that you know and uh, because when you make a mistake and you look at the code very less likely that you will uh, kind of unearth that uh, bug from the code because you are very sure everybody is confident nowadays and you look at the code 10 times 100 times you will not discover that error and uh, if you simulate mind you you will never 99.99 percent you will not be able to uh, unearth such an error by debugging in simulation. I will tell you in a, a moment uh, what is the reason why it will not happen and if you are giving it in a real life um, uh, if you are in a design team many a times the verification is done by some other poor soul and uh, he would have worked out lot of test benches, test vectors for verifying the functionality even there it cannot be honor. So in a moment uh, we will see why this is difficult to, to kind of debug. Uh, the first thing is that um, it is not enough if you verify all the condition like you have some inputs and you uh, like suppose you have 4 inputs 4 single bit inputs. So you have 16 condition or you have uh, say you have 10, 24 uh, input test vectors you run it through or even you have a 1 million test vectors you run it very systematically 1 million test vectors still this error will not be brought up. Why it is so is because suppose uh, in our coding you miss one output in condition 3 okay. Now in you, you have as I said you have simulated the, the million condition all the possible condition. But before the condition 3 you have suppose simulated the condition 2 for which this missing output had the same value say you are expecting in condition 3 uh, uh, some value. Suppose the, 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 the test vector you have simulated for condition 3. The, the one before you simulated is condition 2 and suppose the condition 2 and condition 3 has the same output as far as this particular one is concerned then the output will be correct absolutely correct. So to unearth this error you have to work out a condition where the output is different than this particular condition and if as a designer you, you inadvertently made a mistake you are very because that is by mistake you miss that and you have not re realized this and you will not be able to make that condition to unearth this error. So uh, the best thing is not to make some mistake you know make this mistake. So it is uh, in real life also it is it is better some mistakes are better you do not make such a mistake like you uh, drive on the wrong side of the, the road and then you are bound to, to, to crash into somebody else in a two to a road. So uh, like it is better you do not uh, make such a mistake you be very careful uh, that you do not miss output and when be very careful when you nest uh, the if so that the implied latch or implied memory or inferred latch uh, does not occur. So uh, I think that is where uh, the, the next uh, statement we are going to uh, look at is the case when uh, and what we have left is the loops. But maybe that uh, we are coming to the end of the lecture um, we will look at it uh, in the next lecture. So quickly we can uh, run through the if then, if then is identical to you know the case when else in the concurrent statement. So simple condition is if condition 1 then output gets something else output gets something else. The equation is similar to when else the complex condition is you know you keep on giving various condition. And then you say else for all, not of all the conditions 
equations are similar to when else um, the power comes from multiple outputs and nesting and you could specify multiple output when uh, the conditions are not identical you can start nesting. You can think of nesting in various ways and when you say if you write if if under and if it, it translate to the condition 1 and condition 2 and when you come here condition 1 and not of condition 2 and so on. So you can you can kind of work it out and when you do not specify the else you get an implied latch and which is uh, uh, which is a latch which is useful and you can uh, use concurrent statement to get the same effect and you can uh, it is useful in uh, specifying memory in the case of flip flops and latches. But in the combination case when you have multiple output um, the, the nested uh, if then unintentional latches can happen and as I explained uh, it is very difficult to unearth in simulation because you made it by mistake uh, to work out the condition is quite tough and uh, there is no there is no point in you know there are people who make a mistake which can be corrected in 5 minutes and next one week you will simulate 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 uh, to unearth that error it is not worthwhile you know you plan properly you code properly you go through the code you take any number of you know spend as much as time on paper thinking about it and design then less verification will be there you know uh, an experienced designer or experienced engineer uh, should plan properly go systematically so that uh, with minimum iterations things work properly that is how you should you know work out things than you know rush through the things arbitrarily uh, quickly writing cooking up something and forever debugging forever sorting out the problem uh, what what one mistake you made in 2 minutes can kill your 2 weeks of time many people's time. So, do not do that plan properly. So, that I stop here uh, today with this uh, uh, when else and if then if then else which are kind of similar uh, but if then is, uh, is complex more useful. Uh, so, next class we will take the case when and the loops. So, please revise it. Uh, write uh, some examples of your own uh, using this uh, statements. Uh, so, thank you I wish you all the best.